Hi, so if you're trying to go onto big ideas and you want to be able to, number one, set up your classes and then also set up homework, this is how you would do it. So you would need to go to bigideasmath.com. And so you will see, you know, login page, bigideasmath.com. And so you go here. Now, when you're on this page, this is a screen that you should see. Um, you're not going to enter any username or password. What you're going to do is you're going to log in with Clever. Um, and so you're, as long as you're signed into your teacher account, then it should log you in. Now, when you click it, you log in with your NHUSD Google account. So you click here. And then usually what it'll ask you is that it will ask you for, um, you know, what school are you at? And so you just type in James and you'll choose James Logan and then, you know, click on it. And then you may have to go ahead and say, you know, go and use your email address. That may be one other step that it'll ask you. Now you won't, you'll have your classes here. Now, usually when you're in here, it doesn't have a book chosen for you. And so you have to be able to do that. So you can go to click on your name, go to class management, and then you can go to your active classes and then you can click on it. And down here is where you choose your book. So here, so if you're doing algebra one or algebra two, you go here. So let's just check, click here, add a book. And so you just have to be able to choose the right one. So for algebra two, it's algebra two, common core 2015. And then we have our algebra one California book. And so you would just add it there, whichever class it is. So in this case, mine is algebra two. Um, and then you save changes. Now the list is automatically populated for you. You don't have to have students enter any information it's just already there and then um you know as you get transfers in and out of your class those will add or delete you know within a couple of days it does it automatically for you which is really really cool so make sure you save changes do that for each and every class you're doing it for so for algebra 2 and algebra 1 for example um like for so RSP Calculus doesn't have a book, but just so you can kind of see it, I would choose maybe Algebra 1 California um, and then save it. So I don't want this, but just to, so you can kind of get an idea. Now, once you have the book assigned, what you can do is you can go ahead and create an assignment. And so let's just say you're going to create an assignment wherein I'll go to my Algebra 2 period 1 and then nothing's here. So you can click on create assignment, click on the pencil. And then you'll have a whole list of chapters up here. It's just take a little while to load. And so let's go ahead to the beginning. So let's just say chapter one here, and then we can create an assignment. So since I haven't done one for 1.1, 1 .1, I'm going to click on assign and then add an assignment then you choose a set of problems. Now, normally we don't pick everything. Sometimes they have basic, average. Um, it just depends on what you want to assign. So um, I normally like kind of choosing, you know, there's some already written on the calendar. You can choose that or choose whichever ones you want. Once you choose the numbers you want, um, there's a bunch of other boxes you could choose, need help. You can have a live tutor available. Notice the times that are there. You can click that. You can have a calculator. You can enable Desmos as well, which is really cool too, right? So just kind of options for you, uh, depending on what you need. Um, release for review, I just say on submission. Um, so they kind of know how they scored. Check answer limit. That's if it's like a multiple choice. Um, normally, I just leave this at zero. They can check it as many times as they want. You could preview the assignment, which is usually pretty helpful. You can preview it with answers and without answers. Just so you can kind of see, okay, are these the problems that I want to do? So that's also a very useful tool uh, for you to do. And then also, you, if a student has a question, you can always open it up and then see the answers of what it's expecting. Um, so let's let this load a second, click start. And then so here's the first example. So then you kind of see sometimes it's a drop down menu. Sometimes it is um, fill in the blank. So dragging things into the right box. Um, same thing here. And sometimes it's like typing the right answer, choosing the right um, graph and then some more information here. Uh, 
so that's some options on the homework. Now make sure when you do this, you choose next. And then usually you just choose all students. Um, now, sometimes if you have like a TA, um, you want to take that out. So for example, I have a TA, this is my TA and I just take it out. It really doesn't matter. It's just a matter of your own preference of whether it bothers you that it's still on there, whether they complete it or not. Um, but I would just click on all students, choose next. Start date depends on when you when you want to start it. So if you're like putting in all the assignments for the week or you're doing it for that day, you can set that time. Another thing, so you can click next, a due date. So you can pick your own due date, your own time and so forth. So it's totally up to you how you want to do that. You can name it. So let's just say this is 1.1a or whatever, however you want to name it so you can find it and look for it. You can write a message here if you'd like, like also please submit your um, work on Google Classroom so you can see it, something of that nature, it's up to you. Now this is really handy, assigned to an additional class. So this is really, really cool. So if you have more classes and you wanna assign the same thing. So for example, I have a period two, um, that's also algebra two. And so I'm gonna keep the same time as the dates. Now you may wanna change that to different times. So it's like Monday you want it, you know, for one class, Tuesday you want it to start for another class, you know, the due dates are different. You can go ahead and adjust it here. Now this is, all, so this is the second period I add it or save it at another. Then here's my fourth period. I make any edits or I save it as is. If you save and add another, what happens is it tries to pick a class for you. So you have to put cancel and I don't want that. Um, and so here are the classes already added for you. So that's very nice. Now what you have to do is you must click add to queue. Then the other important part is you are not done at this point. You also have to click assign right here. If you do not do not click assign, it will not show up. It'll just delete it, right? So if I try to click on another place, it says, oh, it's not going to be saved. So that kind of tells you that, oh, you forgot to click on assign. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click assign. Oh, I don't want to do that because my classes are currently in session. Um, but you just click assign, it'll show up. Now, when you do that, um, you can also, you'll see it under the assignments here. So, okay, I'm going to go ahead and click assign and then I'll delete it in a little bit. So when you go in here, then you'll see the upcoming assignments. Notice there is an overdue tab. So you can see anything that you've already checked. Um, you can also double check the the work that they've done or who has completed it and everything else. So let's just say it's you know past the date, they already turned it in and you wanna take a look. You can see what their average score is. You can see how many students have submitted it. Um, there's lots of information you can check on here. So you click on the actions, you can do report. Um, you can preview the assignment again. If you wanna lock the assignment, no one can do it anymore, you can do that. Normally you'll just click on report and then you can kind of see um, who has completed it, what's the percentage, and things like that. So let's take a look at that. So here, number one, if you have several assignments in chapter one, for example, um, you'll be able to choose like which section. So notice it lists 6.6a for me, 6.6b. So that's where naming it comes in um, comes in handy. Um, you can view the assignment again. Now here, it's really cool. You can kind of see how did they score? So in this one, they all scored really well. Now, if they didn't score well, it would show like yellow, it would show red, and it would tell you what number it is. So then you would know, oh, that's one thing that I want to go over. Another thing you can see is you can look at um, each student who completed it. How long did it take them? If that you know, if you want to look at that and percentages. So if you're saying, okay, you need to score at least a 70% or 80%, whatever you choose, then that's something you can discuss, right? Maybe it's kind of like a rubric grading, not just completing it, but what did you score? Um, another thing you can do is you can kind of take a look at the answer. So somebody that got it wrong, for example, you can kind of look at it on this side, you can click on it and you can see, well, what did they type in? Um, and so then that should load. And then you can kind of take a look at what did they get incorrect. So if a student is saying, well, I typed in this answer, it's not coming out right. In this case, she didn't put anything in there. Um, then you can kind of help guide them through it. Like, what is it that they got wrong? Maybe they didn't have the decimal correct um, or some other thing. Like she had a negative, you know, and so forth. So um, that's also a really handy tool in the assignment. So hopefully that helps you out with um, the assignments. You can also click on reports over here. You can run a report for the whole thing. Um, 
you know, sometimes I do export class performance. You can kind of do some more reports there as well. So I hope this helps you out.